All right, so the first thing we have to do here is factoring using algebra tiles. So I look at what's inside here, and I can see that I have one x squared tile. I have one, two, three, four, five, six x tiles, and they're positive because they're colored. And keep in mind that on your final exam, your provincial exam, if they're white, they're positive. Um, these ones, imagine that they're actually colored in green. And in your book, when they're colored in green or red or whatever, um, that means that they're positive. Okay, so these are all positive tiles. On the provincial exam, though, what happens is they're, they're left white, and those ones are positive. And the other ones, the colored ones, are negative. In your book, though, this is the way they do them for some reason. So I got x squared, 6x, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 positive single tiles. So if I was to um, draw tiles above, they have to be the same length, but they're going to be rectangular tiles, and the same length along this side, but it's going to be a rectangular tile. And then if I keep going, it's got to be the same width as the tile below it, so I know it's got to be a single tile, because they have to be the same width as the ones below it, and similarly on this side. So if I look at this, I can actually say, oh, this is an x tile, plus 1, 2, 3, 4. And on this side, I have an x tile, plus 2. So if I look at the factors of x squared plus 6x plus 8, the factors are along the outside. So if you can, if you can make algebra tiles and they have to be a rectangle inside, it has to, you have to arrange them in such a way that it makes a rectangle, um, then you would see that the two factors are written like this, x plus 2 and x plus 4. That means that x plus 2 times x plus 4 is actually equal to x squared plus x or plus 6x plus 8. If you look at this one above and you look at the factored form and you look at the last number here, 8, how does that compare to the 2 and the 4? Can you see? Well, if I take 4 times 2, it's equal to 8. If I look at the 6, how does that compare to the 2 and the 4? Well, I know that 4 plus 2 is actually equal to 6. So for the end number, the end number, I know it's got to multiply. The two factors, the 2 and the 4, have to multiply to the end number. And they have to add to the middle number. Right? Because if I take 2 plus 4, it gets 6. 2 times 4, they get 8. So instead of doing algebra tiles, which are fun, and you can actually do them, and you can get, um, in school, they actually do them with real plastic algebra tiles, uh, but that's how you do the algebra tiles. If you don't want to do that, if you just want to work with the algebra, then let's look here. So the first question I have here, factor x squared plus 5x plus 6. So this is how I do it. I look at what's what I call the magic number. And the magic number is 6. And I need two factors that multiply the 6 and add to 5. Have a sum of 5. If you think of factors of 2 or factors of 6, you can think of 1 times 6, 2 times 3, and that's it. Those are the only two. If I look at 1 plus 6, it doesn't get me 5. If I look at 2 plus 3, it does get me 5. So I know the two numbers are going to be 2 and 3. I know that this is a positive 6, so I know that the 2 and the 3 are both going to be positive because they have to add to a positive 5. That is extremely important because these signs do change, like we'll see in the next one. Okay, So they have to multiply to a positive 6, add to a positive 5, so I know both my 2 and my 3 have to be positive. They multiply to 6, add to 5. So then when I'm factoring this, I set up my two sets of brackets. I know my x tiles, or like from before, my x is going to be first, and then it's going to be x plus 2 and x plus 3, the two factors that I just found. 
Next one here, I have a 28. So that's my magic number. That's the number that I need both my factors to multiply to. And then they also have to add to, that's a positive 28, they also have to add to a negative 29. I set it up like this because then I can see, okay, this and this have to add to this. I know that's a sum. And they have to multiply to my one above. So two numbers that multiply 28. Let's think of factors. 1, 28. You might be able to see them right away. Um, 4 times 7. Whoops, I missed one. 2 times 14. And I think that's it. If I look at the numbers 1 and 28, 4 and 7, I need these numbers to add to 29. If I looked at 4 and 7, they add to 11. And there's no way I can combine those to get to 29. The 28 and 1, however, I can combine to, to, to get to negative 29. I know it's going to be 1 and 28. Oops, that sign in the center should be a multiply. But because they have to add to a negative 29, I need a negative 1 and a negative 28. If I multiply a minus times a minus, I get a positive. Or if I multiply a negative times a negative, I get a positive. So that's good. If I add a negative and a negative, I get deeper, a bigger negative. So the factors this time, I still start with my x tile or my x value. And then I have x minus 1 and x minus 28. It doesn't matter which order you put these in. You could also put x minus 28 and x minus 1. Because they're being multiplied, it would be like 4 times 2 or 2 times 4. It doesn't matter. And those are the factors. I'm done. Those are the factors of my trinomial. All right. Sometimes they will say factor if possible. Factor if possible. If it is possible to factor, then all you have to do is you go through and you factor them. So the first thing I do is I look for, uh oh, this one has a number in front of my r squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for a GCF of the numbers of 2, 14, and 24. Well, 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 14, and 2 goes into 24, so my GCF is 2. Next thing I do is I factor. I take the 2 out. And remember when I'm factoring out, I divide each term. So I divide by 2. 2's are gone. I'm left with just my r squared. Minus. I divide by 2. I'm left with 7rs. Next one, I divide by 2. I'm left with 12. And it's a plus 12s squared. Next thing I look at is it's got two variables, r and s. The only way that's going to change is when we're setting up our sets of brackets, our r will go first and our s will go last. r will go first and our s will go last. Yes, we still need a number in here and a number in here, but we'll have the two letters right there. So exactly the same steps. I look at my magic number, the end is 12. It's got to multiply to 12 and add to a negative 7. So I think of factors of 12. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, anything else? 3 times 4. So if I look at 1 and 12, there's no way I can get to a negative 7. And this is a positive 12. 2 and 6, nope, that gets me 8. Or if I subtract 6 minus 2, that gets me 4. I need a 7. So 3 and 4. Okay, those ones work. So I have 3 times 4. It's got to add to a negative. So I know both my answers, both the numbers have to be negative. So the way that changes it, I have to keep the 2 outside. Next, I put the r minus 3s. And then I have r minus 4, my other one, s. Notice that the r goes first, the s goes second, like I said. That's the only thing that changes, is you kind of split the r up into 2, and then you split the s up into 2. The r goes first, s goes last, just like it is in the equation above. So those are ones that you can factor, and those are ones that say factor if possible. Last example here, if you had one like this, 2x squared 
plus 7x minus 4. Um, first of all, I look for a GCF. There is none. Next, uh oh, if I can't have a GCF and I have a number in here, for this section only, for this section only, you say not factorable. There's no GCF. There's a number in front of your x squared. So for this one, in this chapter only, you say not factorable. Only factorable if you have no number in front of the r squared. Otherwise, you have to do a completely different method, which I will show you in the next lesson. So that is factoring trinomials.